Well, Disrupt Day 3 is underway, and I'm here with Angus Davis, founder and CEO of Upserve. It used to be called Swipely, and they're actually a Rhode Island-based startup. So, so how's the tech <laughs> scene there? Are you the only one? <laughs> uh, we're one of uh, a select few, I, I should say. I lived and worked in the San Francisco Bay Area for over 10 years, but Rhode Island is my, my hometown, and I saw people in the, in the Bay Area going back to different parts of the globe to, to bring their entrepreneurial spirit back there, and I wanted to try to do the same thing uh, back home to New England. So, so let's talk about what Upserve does. You work with restaurants, you have a dashboard for everything they need to know from how their waiters are performing, if they're selling enough desserts or, or alcohol, or, or uh, how their customer reviews look like. What do you do for these 6,000 restaurants that you work with? Sure, so Upserve is basically the smart restaurant management assistant. It helps your restaurant thrive by taking all the information, your reservation system, your point of sale system, payments, online reviews, social media, putting it all in one place so you can run the show more easily. For example, it will tell you things like who your best customers are. It will tell you the performance of your wait staff, who might need help learning how to sell the wine better. It'll even tell you like which might menu item is most likely to turn a first time customer into a repeat guest. Oh, really? So, so if the key lime pie is really good, you gotta sell that so they come back again? Yeah, absolutely. And so, so um, you work with Momofuku here in New York. That's one of my favorites. Yeah. And Fig and Olive. Yep. What are some of your best customers here? Well, we, you know, the great thing about restaurants is it's about, there's about it's an $800 billion industry in the U.S. is restaurants. Americans now spend more at restaurants than they do at food at home for the first time. And the lion's share of these restaurants are independently owned and operated. Mom so, and pops. Mom and pops, yeah. Something like 70% of them are single unit operations. But yeah, the better known ones that are using Upserve today include Mama Fuku, Fig and Olive. Um, out in California, this one called The Plant Cafe. Love that place. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm a New Englander. We uh, are all fans of Harpoon Beer. All the Harpoon breweries are using uh, our products. So we've got some great customers, over 6,000 customers in every U.S. state. And you recently made an acquisition. You acquired Bread Crumb, a point of sale system. You acquired it from Groupon, I understand. That's, yes. So why did you do this? What, what's, what are you going to do? Are you going to integrate it? Sure. Are you going to keep it separate? How is this all going to work? Well, uh, our company at Upserve, we integrated with with a variety of different leading restaurant point of sale systems. And late last year, we started integrating with Breadcrumb. And Breadcrumb's point of sale is very different from the point of sale systems that's used in nine out of 10 restaurants today. So it's, it's not like Square? Uh, no, it's solely focused on restaurants. It's only for restaurants. And that's important because restaurant tours have a lot of unique needs. For example, Square is really good if you want to go up to the counter, buy something, and check out right there. But if you're sitting at the table having dinner and it's time to check out, that's not something that really Square is, is particularly well suited for. So they can be seated on the table and, and pay right there? Uh, yeah, or? just like any other, you know, the, the full service restaurant industry, uh, they have very specialized needs for their point of sale systems. And we don't really see Square as a competitor in that segment of the market. The lion's share of that market is dominated by old school players. A company called Micros that was recently purchased by Oracle, another company called Aloha, and they dominate you know, the, more than two thirds of the market. And one of the things about the way that point of sale has used to work in the restaurant is basically all the things you and I would take for granted in terms of modern technology, well, that hasn't happened yet in the restaurant world. They're still running on PCs. A lot of them actually even run on Windows XP, a product that was released over 15 years ago. Uh, they have the server in the back office. They don't even talk to the internet. They, uh, so you're helping these restaurants get tech savvy. Yeah, the, the new uh, breadcrumb point of sale, it's based on the iPad and it's always connected to the cloud. So it's really the, the premier uh, point of sale system for restaurants that's purpose built to run in the cloud and on iPad devices. And you were telling me that you have all this data on the customers, you use it based on the credit card info, so you compare what they ordered last time to what they ordered this time, and, yeah. and, and see uh, maybe one me, server was able to get them to get ice cream and the yeah. other one didn't? I'll give you an example. We have a, a feature called Shift Prep. We send it out each afternoon before dinner service begins. And the way we do it is we talk to the reservation system and we talk to the point of sale system and we talk to the payment network. What does that even mean? What it means is that when you come in and this time, say you and I go to dinner tonight, we order a bunch of food. And then if you made a reservation to come back in next week, the restaurant would remember that you'd been there a week ago. It would remember which items had been popular with you. Even if, by the way, the restaurant had two locations and that second location happened to be you know, in Chicago, they could remember what things uh, made your visit special here in New York. So they know all about you. Um, so you also are 
introducing bots, of course, because who doesn't have a bot these days? Yeah, yeah. So what do your bots do exactly? Sure, I think a lot of these uh, bot and conversational UI are solving a problem that doesn't exist. I think many of them are basically just trying to reimagine re things like, for example, e-commerce and a chat experience. And nine times out of 10, that's not actually solving a problem. In fact, it's even more cumbersome than the app it's trying to replace. But in our case, it's a little bit different because restaurateurs aren't sitting in front of a computer all day. They're on the go, they don't have a lot of time to dig through reports, and they want to be able to ask a quick question and get an answer. Or even better, they want to be told the answer that they didn't even know they had that they were asking for. So for example, if a VIP guest happens to sit down at table 12, the general manager wants to know that. And instead of even having to ask, because we're integrated with all of these systems, we'll know the second that a VIP... The bot will notify them. VIP, yeah. right here, table 12. Exactly. Okay, okay. Or, for instance, if you are meeting with your liquor rep who's coming in to sell you more vodka, and you're curious, gee, how much Kettle One did we sell last month? You can just ask the bot, how much Kettle One did we sell last month? Instead of trying to go through some Excel spreadsheet and dig up a report. So it's designed to basically save time for the restaurateurs and put it right at their fingertips. And it's something we're adding to our mobile app that we just launched last month, uh, two months ago. And so you're not doing deliveries, are you sure? I mean, it seems like everybody wants to deliver these days. I can't count how many delivery startups there are. Yeah. But you're staying away from that, right? Yeah, no, I mean, we're focused on being at the center of the, the action for the restaurant. So we're doing that through the point of sale, through payments, uh, through integrating with how they're running their wait staff, which what they're putting on their menu. This is totally core to the restaurant. Most restaurants that do a delivery business that aren't in, say, like pizza, Chinese, and certain categories that are pretty high delivery, for most restaurants, delivery is um, a minority of their business. So, for instance, we're doing 20 million meals per month on our platform at Upserve today. That's more than the entire US online food delivery business combined times two. So uh, it's even more than Open Table, which is doing about 18 million meals per month worldwide, and we're just in the US. Okay, and so you've raised over 40 million in funding from a lot of top-notch VCs, but your most recent round was about two years ago. Are you getting ready for more funding anytime <laughs> soon? Well, right now we're just heads down trying to grow the business. We've got a great business on our hands. I would say that um, we'll always be talking with capital, uh, you know, the capital markets to get a sense of what's going on and uh, how we could accelerate our growth. Um, and so, obviously, any entrepreneur would be lying if they didn't tell you that that was top of her or his mind all the time. Um, but I would point out that we have some great investors behind us. You know, first round capital was Josh Koppelman sits on our board, Shasta, Index, Greylock, and most recently Pritzker Group. So we've got some great people behind us as well. Absolutely. And so, what's your path to profitability? Well, it's growth, but it's you know growth that makes sense. We're a SaaS company, so we look a lot at things like what's our customer acquisition cost relative to lifetime value. We're really pleased that right now the lifetime value of our customers is more is something like five times the cost of acquiring a customer. Uh, we have very high low churn, uh, high net promoter, and so on. So these are the types of metrics that other entrepreneurs that care about growing their business should be focused on. All right, well, we're out of time, but thank you so much. Appreciate it. And now we're going to cut to John Biggs, who's at Hardware Alley.